Station. It is Santa Clarita's hometown station, KHTS. Make sure you go to hometownstation.com for all the latest and greatest Santa Clarita has to offer. And speaking of the greatest Santa Clarita has to offer, Kayla Blunetta is in studio with us. Um, is that okay? Is that an all right intro for you, buddy? I don't. I didn't think it had enough theater. Behind oh, I'm it. sorry. And yeah, that's my. The fault. lack of pyrotechnics. <laughs> it's only radio. We yeah. don't have the budget. Yeah, I, I gotcha. thought. I got gotcha. you. Uh, but we also have uh, Tom Lackey, uh, Simon Tom Lackey, joining us in studio um, as well. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, it's exciting to be here. Just got back from Sacramento. Yeah, is uh, it's Thursday your travel day or is it Friday? Tr- tr- usually Thursday. Usually Thursday is a travel day? Yeah, we have session usually in the morning on, on Thursday, and then we move on. But it depends time of year. Sometimes we go all the way to Friday. All right. Well, it's good to have you in here, Assemblyman Lackey. Um, he represents the 36th District, which for the Santa Clarita people, that includes some of you, and it also includes multiple people. Many of the districts are parts of the Antelope Valley. And for us in Santa Clarita, and I assume some of the people in the Antelope Valley, one of the largest pressing concerns that you're dealing with right now is the Semex mine. Um, now, what is the latest on that challenge? Um, even though it's mostly a federal issue, is there anything that can be done in Sacramento when you're there? Yeah, um, Senator Wilk has been leading on this issue for even before I got elected. Uh, this has been a local concern for, for quite a period of time, and, and there are some things that the state can do, and we're trying to advocate uh, in that direction. In fact, as, uh, there's some resolutions that we've been working toward, and uh, I think you're going to be seeing some of those making statements of what the position is on the state, but quite frankly, the most authoritative agency is, of course, the uh, the federal government. Mm-hmm. And uh, I know that the city of Santa Clarita is also working uh, with our government officials in up in Washington, D.C. to try to bring some resolution to this thing. And I know yeah. that uh, Congressman Knight is actually able to make some progress. Yes, and, he did. Uh, so I think we have good things to look forward to, but the battle still does rage. Okay. Now, as a former CHP um, deputy or f- officer, I should say, correct? CHP officer, it's not deputy because it's not LASD. You guys are different. Any beef there, by the sheriff's way? Sheriff's departments are the actual deputies oh, yeah. right, for, for the sheriff. Yeah. So, you no, know, any softball rivalry still going or anything? It's not much of a rivalry. We always dominate them. <laughs> All right. But <laughs> as, as I'm sure any deputy in here or officer could attest to, crime is still a huge challenge for the Santa Cruz Valley, even though we have one of the lowest crime rates, you know, in the country for this type of area. So is there anything that's in the works or do you have any ideas about how we can address this, I wouldn't want to say growing, but ongoing issue of crime within Santa Clarita? Yeah, I got to witness this firsthand about uh, less than a month ago where uh, my car was broken into here in the Santa Clarita area. And uh, it's very frustrating, very frustrating that crime is up across California, both in violent and uh, and property crimes. You have a really nice crime rate, if there is such a thing, here in uh, Santa Clarita. Crime is never, never welcome in I hope Captain Lewis is listening That's and uh, but I, I will tell you this that uh, we have some hope in in the keep California safe initiative that's coming to the ballot measure I happen to be on the public safety committee and so I could tell you that uh, the legislative mood up there is to be uh, more in the rehabilitative side of those offenders instead of uh, trying to prevent more victims and it's it's a bit of a frustration but We'll, we'll continue to move forward because I think people are sick and tired of the Prop 47 and, and Prop 57 uh, unintended consequences that are making themselves very evident. And they're putting us all at risk. Uh, and so I look forward to this initiative because it is a, a very reasonable fix for a lot of the problems. If you have any kind of small business or involved in retail right now, you can understand the, uh, the theft circumstances that have grown into such a uh, epidemic challenge uh it, we've got to do something about this and apparently the legislature is not interested in doing this because i've already brought some legislative proposals forward that i thought were very reasonable but uh clearly they they didn't pass and so now we got to go directly to the people and i think they're going to speak very loudly all right and then just you, you had touched on just real quick, this was the, that rehab, that rehabilitation, that epidemic. Now, a lot of the things that we hear about is a drug epidemic, um, you know, an opi- opioid epidemic. Um, 
you know, especially within Santa Clarita, that like in our area, um, a lot with prescription drugs, with pills. Um, now, what are your plans going to be to continue to address this issue? Now, does that fall into the same approach that you'd have to like violent crime or how would you uh, deal with that um, in terms of what we're seeing in our community right now? I think when we're talking about drug usage, uh, we're talking in most cases addictive behaviors. And so I, I don't think that I think we've learned that punishing addictive behaviors is, is not a good process. And so what we're trying to do is uh, address it through another avenue, and they have uh, a statewide database now called Cures that uh, tracks the issuance of prescription drugs. It keeps the, the people, the addicted people, from shopping from one doctor to another and going to, uh, to feed their addictions in that, that particular manner. And uh, they're, they're also making or, or crafting legislation to make sure that doctors are, are extremely cautious mm -hmm. when, when it comes to uh, prescribing opioid drugs. And so I, I think that that is really, really the, the important process, that we, we try not to uh, punish people who are uh, in an addictive circumstance. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you've heard about it, but there's this thing called the gas tax, uh, apparently. Um, and it's driving Sacramento crazy right now. And that, But a lot of that money is coming to the I-5 project. But a lot of your constituents travel on the 14 freeway. Now, there's a lot of congestion there. Do you have any plans to address that as well, on top of all the other things that we've already talked about? Um, just talking about like the, the freeway construction, just heading up to the AV. Yeah, well, obviously the 14, we, we have 100,000 commuters from the Antelope Valley. Mm -hmm. And uh, you might be able to see a few of those folks if you travel in the morning on the freeway. Uh, so we have a, a very serious challenge in that arena. And, of, of course, the, the gas tax has a lot of problems attached to it. I think that we, we when I say we, my, the party that I'm part of, which would be the Republican Party, we've been trying to bring attention to these transportation issues for quite some time. And quite honestly, it's it's very sad to see they have what what are, what are called road diets, which are actually narrowing uh, certain freeway corridors to encourage people to take public transportation. Mm -hmm. So I think that that is really a, an unfortunate perspective to share uh, because I think it punishes people unfairly. But that's that's a whole other debate. I, I will just tell you that uh, Measure M money is more likely to be and that's county funding mm -hmm. is more likely to be a, a fix than than waiting for the state to actually help relieve some of the congestion on the 14. So we'll be working with our local officials and local governments to uh, make sure that, that those Measure M funds are uh, funneled in a way that they're actually going to benefit those who are paying for it. All right. And then, obviously, a big thing for us and a big thing for the Antelope Valley as well, um, you know, water continues to be one of our biggest issues. Um, you know, we have our new uh, water district, uh, Santa Clarita Water. So um, from your perspective, um, what's currently working and what currently isn't in terms of, you know, water allocation, in terms of you know, how the Antelope Valley, how Santa Clarita gets their water? Because it's very – if you didn't go outside lately, it's dry. It's hot. Yeah, and the Antelope Valley is – is officially what they call a desert. And so guess what? That means that water's uh, kind of Very scarce. scarce. Yes, yeah. sir. So uh, we are working on some things. As you know, the water bond was passed uh, a few years back, and we're finally, I think, going to see some above-ground and below-ground storage. Sites Dam, which is uh, in the northern part of the state, I think is finally going to get some funding from, from the water bond funds. And uh, there, there's also... The transportation of that water, and I know that uh, the Delta Tunnels, which is highly controversial in that region, will greatly benefit Southern California. And so the governor has indicated that uh, that is underway, that process is underway, and that will benefit us. And uh, the one thing that I, I find to be a little disturbing, though, is the, uh, the fact that uh, the state has implemented these what they call emergency regulations and making them permanent. And I, I think that uh, the state shouldn't be making the cookie cutter kind of uh, regulatory intervention. That's why we have all these water agencies because they're very aware of the peculiar and unique circumstances related to their district. And I think we should respect and honor that. All right. And then my final question just for today is the Santa Clarita Valley um, has 
you know, 14,000 vets, I think the last number was that we calculated. Um, those issues for those uh, vets, for instance, like people my age that are vets, they come back um, and college enrollment is low. They're not getting from military life back to citizen life very easily. Do you have any approaches not only for like the young vets to get back into normal life once they come back? And then do you have any suggestions also for how we can improve just veteran care or veterans issues within Santa Clarita and the Antelope Valley? Yeah, what we have in, in the Antelope Valley area is we have two veterans groups that uh, have very broad range of age groups and they meet every week in the morning for breakfast. And uh, they organize, they collaborate, and they introduce themselves so that uh, they can share in their perspectives and share in their successes and uh, take advantage of some of these programs that uh, governments are, are trying to reach and also nonprofit groups uh, trying to reach out. But uh, engagement is always very tricky. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you feel comfortable in your own little area going to a breakfast, something as non-threatening as a breakfast, uh, it's very inviting, a very comfortable at atmosphere, and it's proven to be very, very effective. Mm -hmm. And then, like, for instance, like here in Santa Clarita, we have College of the Canyons, and they have excellent vocational programs and educational programs for vets, designed for vets. So is there any ideas coming down the pipeline? Maybe how do you get those, those vets back into those programs? I know that we have a veteran here that's utilizing that program, but it, is he an anomaly? Is he, uh, is he different than others? And how would you get those others into the classroom, into vocational programs, and back into society again? Yeah, the, the career technical education uh, efforts are growing and expanding in a pretty significant way. I mean, we have a, a program in, in the Antelope Valley that's uh, becoming very, very effective as it uh, relates to some of these new aerospace contracts. And it involves a, uh, the Antelope Valley College uh, setting up, a, it's only a, a few months uh, coursework, and that if you are successful in that coursework, that you are given a job offer. And it, it's, it's greatly benefiting our, our, our vets. All right. Well, thank you, sir. Um, I appreciate you coming in and speaking with us today. I know it's hot, and I know you had to fight through traffic to get here, so I really appreciate you coming out here. Well, it's, it's always a pleasure to, to communicate. Yeah, and again, this is Assemblyman Thomas Lackey with the 36th Assembly District that represents Santa Clarita and uh, parts of the Antelope Valley. Thank you again, sir. Yeah, thank you. Olive Terrace.